recently met her, the next speaker, I met her in a conference a few years ago. I gave a talk on that conference and she gave a talk just after me. And I was amazed, she was such a wonderful, wonderful speaker and ever since I'm trying to bring her to every event that I organized. Um, I wanna call her to the stage and I'm sure you will think she's an amazing speaker as well, though I'm building expectations. Please welcome to the, to the stage, Sanaz Yashar. She's a senior manager at Mendiant. Do you have a Thank you, Manny. After this build-up, I can just disappoint you. So if you don't want to be disappointed, this is the time just to go to the door and escape. Um, no, I'm kidding. I have a, you're looking good here, actually, today. It's good to be, to see faces. Um, uh, I was thinking of what I actually want to talk about today. And um, this is a certain topic that I'm obsessed about. Um, so I'm going to talk about my hobby, and I hope you will like it. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm a senior manager in Mandy, and I'm leading the analysis team in Israel and Europe. And one of the stuff we are doing, we are monitoring actors, as uh, my colleagues mentioned before, CrowdStrike and, and Mystic from Microsoft. Uh, but the specific uh, stuff I'm going to talk about uh, today is what is that cyber component of the war? So do you recognize the sentence I put here? War is a continuous of policy by other means. Who is that? Klausovich, right? He's my hero. Um, so I was uh, trying to tell you that uh, if I put cyber war, it's also true. And if I put cyber, it's also true. And you're actually witness of a very interesting period of time that you see we are sitting in our houses and stuff happening all around, right? by cyber and we are getting affected. Your PII is out there. You're getting this scary kind of SMSs. It actually happened yesterday in Israel, right? A lot of civilians got SMS, scary SMSs from Iran, from Iranian numbers, right? I know where you are. I know where is your children. It's scary, right? And this is war. This is cyber. So I'm going to claim that the combination of that it is. Um, okay, look at this one. On the left, you can see the timeline of the different uh, destructive activities we saw against Ukraine. Can you read the <coughs> date, the first date you can see there? It's even before the kinetic attack actually started. And look at that, like every other day, you have another wiper and another destructive attack before the kinetic during that at Kinetic until today. This is how I would imagine a cyber war look like, right? And if it's not enough, just look at this one. What is this? This is Russia taking down modem satellites. Satellite modems, why they take it down? By cyber means, of course, right? because they want to actually disrupt the command and control, the real command and control, not the nerds command and control, right, with cyber, between the commanders and the soldiers in Ukraine. Having said that, I would say that there is enough, a, a, still a lot of potential how it can escalate in Ukraine. And we do anticipate it more. And the question is why Russia is not all in today. It's completely another story. Why I wanted to, to show you this, because this is a cyber war, you know, um, Komsi Komsa we uh, actually uh, imagined. But I'm going to talk to you about something else. I'm going to be, talk to you about Iranian disruptive evolution and why it's completely look different than this one. And I don't think it's even going to look at this one like this one in, in a decade. And I hope I'm, I'm right because it's recorded and then I have to wipe it out. Um, okay, so I put the espionage activity, which is related to the collection out of the whole uh, disruptive, because what is espionage? Espionage is the best profession of the, of the humanity. Espionage can actually let you do anything else. All the collection data, there is no disruptive or destructive or any activity, even if there is, the, I don't know if you saw the video, right? A steel a factory in Iran get uh, exploded by a alleged 
cyber stuff, there has been a lot of espionage beforehand, right? So Iran did espionage, it's going to be espion to do espionage, and the question is how that gathering and the collection is going to be leveraged in a disruptive kind of uh, way. So um, I'm going to talk about the prehistory time in cyber, it's 2012, the dinosaur times, right? When Iran actually did some real destructive um, activities. I don't know if you remember the, the New York Dam that they actually um, tried to compromise and to um, kind of open the locks. Uh, and also a lot of wipers, right? Uh, wipers that are actually wiping the MBR system, Shamun 1, Shamun 2, Shamun 3. Uh, so this is the prehistory. And then we are seeing the Iran, Iran like posing as crime, doing crime, uh, masquerading as crime, using crime tools, right? And then there is another, this, this period of time, they are not completely distinct, they are overlap, but I do believe that the Iranian regime has different focus on each times. The next phase we are actually seeing today is, is Iran leveraging that uh, kind of crime posing and a disruptive attack in order to amplify a message, right? Those hack and leak stuff, doxing stuff. But what is the next stage? I'm thinking that even more, right? It just uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, maybe even a week ago, 2,000 Israelis were, were uh, evacuated from Turkey. Why? Because Iran looking for blood. Uh, and how they are going to find Israelis in Turkey? How? Asking around are you Israeli? Okay, they are going to conduct cyber operations in a way to find those Israelis and to target them. So I'm telling you that I think we are going to see even more and more uh, this uh, trend. Uh, Iran using our own power as a democratic country, right? In order to amplify the message and kind of uh, convey half kinetic, half cyber kind of operations, right? But if you look at this, Access. You can see maybe the severity of the real destructive kind of attack from Iran getting down, but the frequency, right, is increasing. And the question is who is winning here? And if we are actually in a real war, just a timeline for you that it's not just from my imagination. So you have, um, and also there is a, a claim that says Iran cyber operation was developed after, just after, they got it hard from Stuxnet, Stuxnet, right? And it's a question like actually how this race and this cyber war is shaping, who is helping who, right? Like the vaccines and the, the real viruses and everything. So uh, we have this Iran DDoS attack against uh, um, a financial uh, institution in, a, um, in US and we had that uh, Sans Casino, a very big wiping and kind of destroying all the computers there. Do you, do you remember why? Because Edelson said that we should, like in a news thing, uh, we should try to put an atom bomb in the desert of Iran. And then Khamenei, which is the supreme leader of Iran, said we should smack him in the, in the, in the mouth. In Farsi, it sounds better. Uh, and that smacking was what? Was wiping those computers in sense. Um, casino. Next one, look at this one. Now you're getting all the colors, right? Because it's kinetic, it's hack and leak. People are actually dying. There are assassinations, Soleimani, Fakhrizadeh. Then we see a cyber, then they do doxing. Okay, so uh, just to tell you that in a prehistory, this is the two examples I just uh, showed you. Uh, the, uh, the Bauman Dam uh, intrusion, uh, the Shamun thing, right? A very classic, nice wiper that they continue to develop uh, during those years. Next stage, we still see a trilogy of wipers wiping the MBR systems during the two, 2019. 2019, December 2019, three, not one, not two, three. All Middle East, active in all Middle East, and even some Europe places, right? So the, the, the capability is still there. There are real 
tool developers in the Iranian cyber apparatus that still know to this wiping stuff. So why we don't see it in Israel? Why we don't see it in US still? Because they are moving their focus on something else. And here what I'm trying to, here we are in a um, crime mode, right? This is a certain third actor, we call it Temp Zagros. You would know this actor also as Muddy Water. This actor is related to the cyber of the to Ministry of Intelligence uh, of Iran, which is a kind of parallel to CIA and FBI altogether. Um, and uh, they started very, you know, kind of simple tools, um, easy to reverse, uh, wide kind of attacks. They moved to some more complex one, as you can see, Mori Agent was the one we really liked, and our reverser really didn't like because he started to curse in, in Russian when he saw a very complicated kind of tool. They used even Farsi and uh, they used even Hebrew in that tool in order to say, oh, maybe it's Israelis, right, hacking. Uh, and the complexity actually went over. So we were looking, okay, this is the one that we should take care of. This is the one that they are going to wipe our, our computers to take the electricity down because they are good developers there, right? But we were wrong because look what happened then. Here what happened then, right? So this is all the tools, uh, crazy tools I told you. Attribution, we are attributing it to the Ministry of Intelligence and Security of Iran. And then we saw this one. Did you see this news? US charges Venezuelan doctor for using and selling Thanos ransomware. First of all, he's a doctor. Second, he's Venezuelan, and then he does also ransomware. And who is he selling it to? To Iranians. To this group. Did they need him to develop a ransomware? But they are posing as crime, right? So we have evidences that, um, like not me, also the, the government of the United States actually has charges against this group selling uh, actual ransomware to a nation state group by Iran. Oh, I see a lot of flashes. This is my good side. Let me do that. Um, and, and actually, uh, uh, they are doing the ransomware, hack and leak, take the money. They have to pay something back to this guy whose name is Moises, I was, kid, I was laughing because I'm, I'm almost sure that there is somebody in Iran said, okay, his name is Moises, it's like Mois, maybe we should just do collaborating with him, right? It's like M-O-I-S. So, and he gets some of the money and they get some of their targets and some of money also. So this is the crime mode. We know that this group were capable of doing their stuff alone. Why they did, why they go to Moises to buy Thanos? Just because. Um, hack and leak. It was okay if they were just doing ransomware and asking money or not asking money like a thing, but the hack and leak stuff, it is something that works in a very certain environment. It works just if you're a democracy. Why? Because our newspapers, our journalists are amplifying this message, right? We just sat here and I cannot tell nothing about Adam Mayer because I actually admire him, but we are all exposed to something that Iranian wanted us to see. This is amplifying the bad message, right? Even it was funny and a very bad Hebrew, so it was fun, right? So if they do that and we don't talk about this, the, the goal was not achieved. If they do that, we talk about it and we even give them, give them leads, did they achieve their goal? Is it a war? Are they winning? I let you judge. So about the, uh, all this stuff uh, in the hack and leak, we have certain groups that we are looking uh, of them. I didn't want to bring you any specific band, but I just wanted to see our portal and to see how many there are there, right? Like, <laughs> look at the date. Every other week there is another one. Hacking, leaking, hacking, leaking, doxing. Hacking, leaking, shaming, right? Here is this just the Moses stuff. The, the second was is hackers of saviors, which I really, I think they are one of the most capable. 
and one of the less that I like, right? Look at all this stuff they are doing, right? And the last one uh, against a, a new version of Moses, Moses stuff. Um, is that effective? What they are trying to achieve? For the non-Hebrew speakers, I can say what's uh, written in the, it's the main title in Ynet. It says, Israel under attack. Websites are down. What happened, Iranian? They went after a host that there were a few, a few, a dozen of uh, websites were on that host. They interrupted that host, so the um, websites were down and people like got hung and then we, do the, we amplify the panics, right? This is in Hebrew. The second one, what's written here? For the first time, an Israeli hospital was hit by a major ransomware attack. Do you remember that? Hillel Yaffe, right? Who was behind this attack? Give me a name. Iran? Do you know how many times I heard it was Iran? It was not Iran, and I won't tell you who it was because we want to keep the secret, right? But it was not Iran. But the idea that everybody in Israel were sure that here they are. This means deterrence. If they did that without doing that, this is deterrence. So maybe they are achieving. So we should look into ourselves and say, do we get them enough meat to continue to do this kind of stuff. This is the Israeli audience. Maybe in Israeli audience we laugh a little bit, right? Maybe it's not completely effective. But who is the real audience for this Iranian cyber auto apparatus? Who they are trying to, what they are trying to achieve? You are very silent today. <laughs> yes, wait, for any Middle Eastern country, <clears throat> also Israel, the most goal, the, the biggest goal of the regime is to continue to rule. For, for the Iranian, before they want to do something with Israelis or with Saudis, they want the stability of the regime. So this is the Iranian audience. It is in Farsi. According to the is Iranian news, we are completely in the dark. We don't have any electricity, our ammonia is leaking, our people are afraid going out of the house. They're actually publishing it inside Iran. Why, what, what they are trying to show? That they win and we lose. Is it effective in Iran? I don't know. I don't know because people are not stupid anymore. Going back. So, I know it's a little bit, you know, um, ugly, but I wanted like colors of the flag. <laughs> Next time I make it better. So, I do think that we are going to see more and more hybrid kind of attacks. Attacks and collections and gatherings that they are going to enable the Iranian regime in order to conduct actual kinetic attacks. Why they want to do that? Because I am claiming that they want to rewrite the psychological narrative. It's like MBR in a social way, right? They want to show they are winning and they need a little bit of boom boom amplifying it by the, uh, by the um, telecommunication, you know, by the platform, social platforms and say, oh, here we've been now it doesn't matter what you say. Um, you know, we have this, I don't know if you had it in Israel or other places, but I had Sanaz, it in- sorry, we need to finish in the next One minute, seconds. we had this play, look, like doing missiles with ships, right? This is the actual thing is happening between Iran and Israel and the West. And this one, I want to remember, we are going to, to discover, to actually uncover a, a new a threat actor that this is what they're doing. They're going after the ships and then they are using it in a kinetic attacks. With that, it was a pleasure meeting you here, and thank you so much. Woo! Thank you so much. Pleasure. I promised you she would be great, and she was. Perfect. I was so happy that Cyber Week, uh, Gili and uh, Itzik